Hi there, you're watching a demo of Popper, which is a little package I wrote for Emacs that helps you manage your windows. Here's the problem. Out of the box, Emacs is not very good at managing your windows for you. Things work fine so long as you have exactly two windows on screen, which is fine for simple tasks, but it causes a lot of friction once you're dealing with more. Here's what I mean. Here I have two buffers, two list buffers, one on the left, one on the right. And let's say I'm working in the one on the left and I need to look up something. So I look up auto revert mode. It opens in a help window on the right, which is cool because I can continue to work on the left, refer to this window on the right. When I'm done, I press Q, I'm back where I started and everything's good, right? Well, not quite. Instead, let me open IELM, which is a Lisp interpreter built into Emacs. I can work here, uh, but you'll notice that it opened in the same window as the one I was working in. And so, um, that's already a problem because I can no longer see what I was working on. But also, when I close this Lisp interpreter, oops, there goes my carefully placed window arrangement. This is an example of the kind of friction I was talking about. <coughs> now, I'm going to get my previous window arrangement back by using winner undo, which is a command that's built into Emacs as part of the winner mode package. I'll have more to say about winner mode towards the end of this presentation, but for now let's move on. Um, here on the left I have a LaTeX buffer and on the right is some other stuff. And let's say I want to find all occurrences of something. So the occur buffer shows up on the right, which is fine. I can refer to this, edit this, and when I'm done I can press Q and I'm back where I started. Again, it looks like everything works fine. But if I try something else, for example, um, if I try to compile this document, you can see that um, there's an error shows up on the right. So I can check out the error. And now my, well it's overtaken my uh, previous uh, window arrangement, but that's fine. So if I press Q, unfortunately that window disappeared. If I press Q, it's just a complete mess. Let's go back to where we were. Alright, on the right here I have an org file with some code blocks that I evaluate in this MATLAB buffer, which is a REPL at the bottom. Um, so I don't need this MATLAB buffer to be showing always. On the other hand, if I get rid of it, that is to say I kill the window, I didn't kill the buffer, um, I work in this org buffer and I need to look at the MATLAB buffer again. I can't. Um, I have to go through this process of splitting the window and then switching to MATLAB. Um, this is another example of the friction that I mentioned going back here for a second if I want the help window back the help window that I was that I brought up uh, a minute ago again I have no recourse but to switch to the help window all right the issue is that some buffers are more important than others some buffers are ephemeral uh, like the messages buffer for example you want to see uh, what it shows maybe once and then you just want it to stay out of your way. And other buffers are important but only intermittently. Um, that is to say you want, uh, you want them to stay out of your way but only until you need them and then you want them to be available immediately. And, in, uh, and always you want none of these buffers to disturb your window arrangement or if they do to restore the window arrangement uh, when they disappear. Hence popper mode. So popper mode is a minor mode for Emacs that categorizes all buffers as either regular or as a pop-up and it lets you summon and dismiss the pop-ups as and when you need them. Um, I'm going to turn on popper mode and now 
Um, we can do things like toggling pop-ups, cycling through them, killing open pop-up buffers, and so on. This is best understood through a demonstration. So I'm here on the buffer on the left, and I'm going to press a key binding that is bound to toggling the latest pop-up. And you'll notice that the help buffer shows up. It's treated as a pop-up. It does not take over the window from before. It shows up at the bottom of the screen, which is of course customizable. We'll get to that in a bit. And you can see that it's a pop-up from this indication in the mode line uh, that says POP. And now it's a single uh, key binding to dismiss and summon this pop-up. I can also cycle through all my pop-ups. So with a different key press, I can go through all the buffers that popper mode considered as pop-ups. So the occur buffer, some the messages, uh, some compilation output, the REPL, and so on, until we're back here. Um, we can also turn a regular buffer into a pop-up and vice versa. So here, for example, the buffer on the right is actually an org file that I'm using to set the state um, of Emacs for this presentation. And I don't care for it to be shown all the time, but I do want to be able to see it when I need it. So what I can do is I can lower this to a pop-up. So you can see that it now shows up the way uh, other pop-ups do, plus it has the mode line indicator. And now I can dismiss and summon this the way I would any other pop-up. I can also cycle through all my pop-up buffers. And if I want this to be a regular buffer again, I can raise it back with the same uh, key press. Of course, you can do this in reverse. You can take a pop-up that you want to stick around, and then you can raise it to the status of a regular buffer. Um, another use case for this so if you look at the frame on the right, this is LFeed, the feed reader for Emacs. Up top is a specific entry. At the bottom is a list of entries. And um, you'll notice that the full article does not fit on screen. I want more reading space. So what I can do is go to the buffer at the bottom and turn this from a regular buffer into a pop-up. It says pop here. And now I can show and hide that with a single key press, giving me more space. And I can get the uh, list back anytime I want. I'm going to raise this back to being a regular buffer. All right. One thing you may have noticed is that as I cycle through my pop up buffers here, um, I've accumulated quite a few. And I have the same problem again, which is that I have to cycle through a whole bunch of them before I can find the one I want, which is the help buffer. Um, so Popper can group pop-ups for you that, so that you can access them in the context in which they were spawned. This is also best demonstrated uh, using an example. So let me enable grouping. And now, um, if I try to cycle through all my pop-ups starting here uh, in this list buffer, I start with the uh, help buffer from before, which makes sense. And as I try to group it, you'll see that I can't. And the only pop-up that I have access to is the one that I spawned from this buffer. Um, if I try it from the buffer on the right, it shows me only the messages buffer and I'm trying to cycle but it's the only one I have access to. If I use the same command here, if I try to um, toggle my pop-ups, um, all the buffers in this uh, window configuration belong to the same project and that's the context that's being used. So with the first press of the toggle command, uh, the MATLAB buffer disappeared which is fine because it's a pop-up. And now, if I cycle through them, you will notice that the buffers that show up 
are the ones that pertain to this project. So the REPL and then the LaTeX compilation buffers, the occur buffer that I created from uh, the window up here and so on. All right, so you can get Popper from Melpa. It's as easy as package install Popper. And if you want to give it a shot, you can go ahead right now. The rest of this presentation is focused on uh, some nifty customization you can do uh, and some advanced features, a few of which I think are pretty cool. All right, this is Emacs, so let's talk customization. The first thing you'll want to do is let Popper know what buffers you consider to be pop-ups so it can manage them for you. And the way you do this is by setting this variable, uh, Popper reference buffers, and you give it a list of either major modes or strings or a combination of both. Buffers with these major modes are considered to be pop-ups and buffer names that match these regular expressions are uh, likewise considered to be pop-ups and this is the list that I'm using for this demonstration. Um, when I talked about grouping pop-ups, I didn't uh, um, explain what a context is. So the context that I'm using is uh, the idea of a project from Emacs built in project.el library so that the pop-ups that are available to you from inside a project buffer are those that pertain to that project and were spawned from uh, any any project buffer that belongs to the same project. Now this makes sense to me, it may not make sense to you, which is fine. Um, you can also, it, uh, Popper also has support for uh, projectile projects, grouping by projectile projects rather. Um, you can also group by default directory, um, but if none of these make sense, you can write your own. Uh, you can group pop-ups however you want them and writing it is as it is as simple as defining a function um, that is called in the context of each pop-up buffer you can refer to the documentation for details all right another thing you may want to do is to change uh, the mode line display on pop-ups so here for example I'm going to set the mode line display to nil and now if that worked uh, yes, so you can see that this pop-up window uh, no longer has a mode line. Likewise, it's the same here. This help buffer doesn't have a mode line. And I can cycle through the pop-ups that belong to this project and no mode line. So this may be an easy way um, to help you identify a pop-up. You can also set it to an arbitrary string. Um, so I reset it to the value from before and you can see that the mode line is back and it is a, uh, the string pop here telling you that this is a pop-up. Okay, now Popper has been doing two things. It's been deciding which pop-up to show you next uh, in a way that's uh, hopefully close to what you want and then it's been deciding how that pop-up should be displayed on your screen. In keeping with the principle of least surprise, Popper places all pop-ups by default in the same location. At the bottom of the, f of the screen, that is at the bottom of the frame, uh, with a maximum height of roughly a third of the frame. But uh, that's not what you might want. You can customize the Popper group and you can change this variable, Popper display function. Um, you can write your own or you can supply a function that accepts a buffer and then displays it on the screen and that's uh, that's pretty much it so this can be anything and you can have the buffer displayed in any way you want but and this is what I do you can also ask Popper to stay out of the business of deciding how windows should be displayed because there are many other packages that do this and they do this in a more customizable and extensive manner. So if I change display control to user, now uh, Popper will no longer decide where Popper should be displayed. It will only cycle through them in an order that is hopefully close to what you want. 
Now this this assumes that you have some other customization uh, pertaining to display buffer that lets Emacs know where you want windows to be displayed. If you don't then uh, it's going to use the default Emacs display rules which might be fine if you're a one main window kind of user but if you want an ID like setup you should probably customize uh, display buffer a list which is a list of buffers and rules for the windows that are uh, used to display them. For example here uh, is a rule for IELM. It lets Emacs know that you want IELM to be displayed in a side window on the left with a window width of 50 columns, 50 characters. So if I evaluate this and now I call IELM it should open on the left with a width of 50 but additionally popper mode is active so popper has uh, recognized this as a pop-up that means that you can now access it uh, you can toggle it summon and dismiss with a single key press um, with this you can emulate the uh, drop-down terminal behavior but you can apply this to any buffer uh, in my case, I have a whole bunch of window rules in display buffer a list. Uh, this is not what I recommend doing, but I have them. So what I'm going to do is enable all of them. And now, um, sorry, I should be able to do fancier things. So let's stop grouping pop-ups by context for a moment. Okay, so now I should be able to open the next pop-up without closing the current one um, or I should be able to open and close all my pop-ups. So now if I cycle through my pop-ups, I get the ELIS buffer. You can see that I get the help buffer on the right. It's still a pop-up but I've customized how it shows up. So every buffer shows up where it's supposed to. The occur buffer shows up at the top. Um, but I can also do more interesting things like I can hold the occur buffer there, pass a universal argument to the toggle command and now it shows the next pop-up without, uh, without removing the previous one. I can do that again and um, it's going to show you all your pop-ups assuming that they have been configured to, sh to show up at different slots or places on your screen. I can also hide all my pop-ups or show all my pop-ups um, which can get pretty messy if you have too many of them but all right you can do that now the reason that I do not recommend customizing display buffer a list by hand is best covered in the Emacs manual it says for example that mastering display buffer can be frustrating I think the reason that this is so complicated uh, is historical. I don't. I'm not quite sure, but I don't have to worry about it because there exist packages like Shackle that provide an easy interface to customizing display buffer, so that the job of um, deciding where on your screen and how a buffer should be displayed is. Uh, easy to set up using shackle and then popper mode will handle uh, which pop-up is sh shown next and uh, as well as how you can summon and dismiss them. Alright some quick notes uh, what's up with winner mode so popper was born out of frustration with winner undo it's got a few issues one as far as I can tell it's the history is linear uh, which means that changes to window configuration can be lost because it's not a tree. Um, it does not always save the state of your windows. Uh, quite often I get a message saying this is the last known window configuration when I try to use winner undo. It does not play well with tabs or um, other window configuration managers like eyebrows. It's an all or nothing affair. It saves the positions of all windows on the frame so it's not granular enough. It also saves cursor positions um, and I don't want it to be moving the cursors around. Some of this might be customizable but 
on the whole um, it's okay for quick changes but it's not a granular enough solution um, another alternative to this package is popwin it's a similar window handling package it is significantly more customizable because it does it it's in the business of both displaying pop-ups and also deciding how and where they should be displayed so it has features like shackle it has a, its logic is a lot more complex uh, which can be good or bad you can tweak it to your liking but there's more to contend with um, as far as I know it does not group pop-ups by context which is the killer feature for me because um, I, I want it to do what I mean and display the window the pop-up buffer that um, I expect but hey popwin may serve your need better to check it out if you use any max distribution uh, can you use popper mostly yes with prelude space max or uh, centauri max it should work um, there may be a little bit of glue code that's needed a little bit of tweaking but should work just fine with doom max however um, I'm not so sure Doom has its own fully featured pop-up manager. Do check it out if you use Doom. Uh, pop-ups are grouped by window, uh, not buffer. So the the primary entity that's being shown, uh, that's being recognized as a pop-up is a window and not a buffer, which may or may not be what you want. And also, as far as I know, it does not group windows by context, group pop-up buffers or windows by context. But anyway. You can get Popper from Melpa. The source is on GitHub. It needs testing, especially with if you use other packages that change uh, window display behavior. Uh, it tries to not do too much, so it should work with most of them, but I'm not sure. Um, there are a few minor features planned. For example, the ability to specify a buffer as a pop-up using an arbitrary predicate instead of just using minor uh, major modes or buffer name regular expressions but for the most part um, it is it's this is feature complete um, do check it out let me know if there are bugs or if it doesn't work well with some other package that you use um, I look forward to your contributions thanks for listening